welcome to another episode of Taboo Marketing, a video blog that exposes the whole truth about marketing. My name is Delia, and today I have a guest with me as we are continuing our Tabulous Marketing Club video series. So I have a guest with me today, Daryl Andre from Bamco, who's going to introduce himself. Good morning. Thank you, Delia. Uh, my name is Daryl Andre, and with Bamco, we're actually one of the, uh, the top branded merchandise companies in North America. Um, you may recognize some of our work through Dunkin' Donuts, the swag and fun stuff they give away. Uh, if you're a Peloton rider and you've ever gotten a, a box of goodies uh, from Peloton, that also came from us as well. So we partner with some of the top companies. And, uh, and today, Delia, thank you so much for the invite. We're going to tell you like the, the good and bad of what's happened in 2020. It's super excited. So thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, glad to have you on the vlog. So yes, today we're going to talk about, I myself is very curious as a marketer, today we're going to talk about the merchandising industry. As we know, 2020 year has essentially, the world has been flipped upside down. Many industries have been impacted, some in a negative way, some grew and exploded exponentially. So many industries have been impacted in different ways. But today I'm really curious to hear from Daryl um, how the merchandising industry has been impacted specifically. So this is actually my first question for you, Daryl. Um, with literally no live events in 2020, with people working from home, which like you don't want to ask for their home addresses to send them gifts or promotional items. With that, uh, how do you know that the merchandising industry has been impacted in 2020? Like, did it go down? Did a lot of companies like close down, maybe did the revenue decrease? I'm really curious to hear. Well, absolutely. And, and that is, that's the question that everyone's really been asking. And um, it's almost like a, huh. it's, it's really, it got really bad very quickly. Um, so I've actually been in the branded merchandise world since 2004. And, and I've never seen anything like this before. I know that there's some industry veterans who have, have seen some of the downturns um, with, with different recessions and, and, and such but nothing like this. And, and the promo industry as a whole took a nosedive, uh, just much like the stock market back in March and April, and when everything really ground to a halt. And uh, But there's companies that jumped on the PPE, or as people may know, personal protective equipment. Um, they either maintained or grew. So uh, we know that for sure that the industry is down in sales on 2020 um, on average by around 30 to 35%, but there's been different numbers thrown around. And those are big numbers. Some say less, some say more. Uh, it depends really on who does the research. But I also know that there are companies who have done incredibly well um, during this pandemic, including Bamco, where they've actually increased sales exponentially uh, because they really uh, took on the PBE and ran with it so quickly. Um, but on the flip side, there are companies who seized operations, layoffs and furloughs. And, um, and also from an opportunity standpoint, people who move companies, <clears throat> including myself. So <clears throat> it got ugly very quickly, but it also allowed for companies to make some changes and also for, for people in the industry to make changes. And uh, so it's actually been as, as awful as it's been, it's also been very exciting uh, to be part of something that's never happened before. So. Yeah, um, two thoughts on my end. Like, I'm surprised that on average, based on your research, is 30, 35%. I, for some reason, would have imagined it's way more, like it's way worse. Because, like, again, being in marketing, like, I haven't ordered a lot of merchandising swag material this year, except for employees. So I'm surprised it's uh, not, like, more than 50%, but it's really good to hear. And, of course, like, not a surprise that companies like Bamco that were able to pivot and able to sort of, like, you know, uh, pivot their direction to run with the course, of course, succeed just like many other industries um, have done the same, like I don't know, restaurants changing their direction and starting a lot more like um, go out options, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's interesting. My right. next question for you. Sorry, these numbers are actually based on a year now. So when it, when the pandemic first started, it was a nosedive and then it came, it came back up. So it's actually based on uh, averages. Averages, gotcha. Okay, okay, that makes sense. But still, like that, that's good. I'm happy to hear that it's like not more than fifty percent. That's good. It was at first. <laughs> right, right. That makes sense. Um, my next question for you is: the whole world essentially went virtual. Conferences went virtual. 
Um, there was online shopping, meetings went virtual. I'm curious if there's any uh, virtual swag now. Obviously, besides like e-gift cards, I personally can't think of anything else. But is there anything else that's like virtual swag now? Oh, my goodness. So actually, so many things have shifted, that's for sure. Uh, virtual swag bags and swag gifts have actually been the fastest growing segment. Um, so, so since most events have been either canceled or moved online, uh, we've been sending out a tremendous amount of work from home kits, virtual kits. Um, so basically what that does is, is for anyone that would have gone to a, a traditional conference or event or trade show, they, they'd get their, their little tote bag that they'd go around and fill it up with their goodies. Right. So we've actually done this for several clients. Actually, I don't even know the number, but a lot um, where we do the same thing. So, so sponsors and, and vendors are always trying to find ways to stay engaged and it's very difficult through online. So if you're in an industry that's very touch and feel, um, how do you get in front of your buyers? So we've been doing a ton of different swag kits where the bag will have the conference name and then inside we'll have a water bottle from so-and-so and, and a notebook from so-and-so. So it's been, it's really been cool. And I'm like, who doesn't like a swag bag? Like I love promotional products and I love getting anything I can get. I just love swag. So would you actually like, would your customers actually send these swag bags to people who are virtually attending a conference? Oh my goodness, absolutely. So when you sign up for a conference, basically you are, um, you're, you're providing your information and then they'll still actually say like, if there's a t-shirt involved, they'll say, what size shirt are you? Or oh. there's things like that. So um, they're just getting kits instead of getting it, um, walking around on their own at a show. So it gets delivered right to them. Who doesn't like mail that you didn't expect? That's awesome. That's right. It's, okay. it's like real <laughs> gifts now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's like a surprise component to it. And I like how you're talking about like the uh, customers, they voluntarily provided their home addresses because yeah. probably part of the registration process. They right. asked for, hey, if you want to get a gift. So it's not like a creepy, hey, what's your home address? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like that's what like, I don't know, uh, yeah. I talked about with other marketers. Totally, totally. Okay. Awesome. Um, moving on to the next question. Like, what is the coolest swag idea that you've done in the past couple of months? Is it, is it the uh, the uh, swag bag that you just talked about? Like, I imagine like your merchandising industry, your company, your customers are getting really creative. So like, what's the coolest thing that you've seen? Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of the funny things that I say this all the time is who would have thought that like masks and hand sanitizers would be like, <laughs> Top products of 2020. Um, so we're actually doing an incredible amount of, of products like this. And the nice thing is that there's so many different styles. There's camo style. Um, there's there's obviously there's a, there's a literally a hundred and hundreds of different styles. Um, but I've always said some of the coolest ideas are some of the simplest ideas. Um, so we actually did a project for a client for for the holidays, and they actually sent out two masks, three sanitizers inside of a bag that you can wash your masks in. And then they put a, 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 cool. a, note, a note from the company saying have a, have a blessed holiday season, et cetera. And they put a $50 um, skip the dishes gift card. That's so, so awesome. I would love I'm, that. I'm like, I want that too. So, so there's things like that where it says, oh, that must be, it's, it's like, oh, it's just a mask and sanitizers. But when you create it as a kit and we actually put crinkle paper that matched the company's logo. Um, so you create an experience, like an unboxing experience. Um, so that's been cool. But at the end of the day, it's still a mask and still sanitizer, but people loved it. I got an email from the client yesterday saying this was incredible. Thank you so much. So it doesn't always have to be out of these world ideas, but there is one thing. Actually, our company did it. And um, so Bamco sent out a fitness kit and it'd be, I wish I could, I can't find the sheet now, but it had a sheet that said the eight minute workout or seven minute workout. And then it was our entire leadership team had like 80s outfits on. And they were doing like just workout poses and it was incredible. So that, is, that, that, was, the, that was the first piece. I love that so much. Right? Oh, it gets better. So inside the kit, it had a Camelback water bottle. It had a Nike workout shirt and a Nike backpack. And, and so when you open this thing, you're like, holy smokes, like there's a, this is great product. So, so during this whole thing, like name brands have been, been all the rage because People are getting less swag or promo, but they're when they get something like that that's co-branded, it has a huge high level of perceived value. And it really does show an employee or a prospect or a client um, that the company actually um, 
gives value and, and gives strong product. Uh, and, and that is hugely, people love that. And, and on the same thing, like with any cool swag kit or promo kit, the products need to be useful. Um, so basically anything that can be shared. So blankets, food items. Right. Uh, we're also doing one right now. Um, <laughs> this is hilarious. It's a poutine kit. So it's going to include a couple potatoes, a potato <laughs> french fry maker, cheese curds, um, shipped across the country overnight. So there's so many cool ways to, to build engagement from home. And um, so we're really working with a ton of clients to, to really make that happen. Wow. I love that. And like, this is usually like your company that comes up with these creative ideas or is it in like together with the clients too, like the fitness idea with the picture of the leadership team and outfits. Like I find that hilarious. No, I love it. So fun. So it depends really. So <clears throat> the poutine idea, I love to eat. Um, hundred percent was not my idea. Um, but it's, uh, so it really comes from collaboration with right. what we clients do. And then clients coming to us say, what do you think of this? Can you do this? Like, how do you ship cheese curds overnight across the country? <laughs> it's called, you tape them to a, a, um, an ice pack and just make the couriers drive faster. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so we talked about sort of the past year, how it's been, um, it's been impacted, what happened, your experiences. Then now let's take your experience and try to project for 2021. Uh, what do you think the next six months are going to look like for the merchandising industry? In my mind, when I'm uh, looking at conferences, in my mind, even, even after six months, I don't think our life is going to be just totally normal, just like pre-COVID. Um, there's probably not going to be, again, like live events for at least six, first six months in a year. Like, what do you think the, like, the 2021 is going to look like? And do you think the merchandising industry has been shifted and uh, changed forever in some ways, just like many other industries. Yeah, I, I completely, I, I wish I could see ahead. Um, I think at the end of the day, people love branding merchandise, they love swag. Um, <clears throat> for people that work from home, companies will probably allow that to continue for at least for the short term. But the vaccine, um, talk of the vaccine is, is definitely uh, giving people a glimmer of hope that we'll be resuming our normal lives at some point. Um, when it comes to the actual brand and merch side of it, I think that now marketers, event planners, and clients have gotten more accustomed to finding different ways to impact. Um, so I think 2021 will definitely have a, have a stronger like overall revenue than 2020, but it really is going to be based on creativity. So um, instead of just sending out a water bottle, <clears throat> you send out that kit that has the, the eight-minute workout and then include the water bottle in that. So it's not just like, here's another water bottle. Um, but I also think that <clears throat> the companies that are really good at it are going to grow. So um, obviously I work for a company. Um, th there's really going to be a high level of um, pressure put on uh, delivering on time with the least amount of hassle as possible. So like for us at Banco, like we have almost unlimited picking and packing capabilities. Right. Um, we work with all the couriers. So we can send out incredible amounts of, of product um, just because our infrastructure is so, is so strong. So I think that we're, there's going to be a lot of companies who are going to struggle to, to really nail that. <clears throat> and I think until they do, they're not going to see growth because it is from, from an infrastructure perspective, it takes a long time and it's a lot of manpower to create these kits and make them seamless. Um, so it's, I think 2021 is, is going to stay on the, the work from home kits. Um, but once the world resumes, I, I, I read something recently about <clears throat> the pandemic in 1918 and they talked about the roaring 20s. Um, everyone just got dressed up and because with whatever they wanted to wear just to go out. So I think we're going to see a resurgence uh, bigger than ever um, because people want their, their lives back. Right. And I think with, with swag, um, <clears throat> swag brings happiness. Um, everyone loves getting stuff, um, either free or if it's, if it's Cobot or whatever. But I think 2021 looks strong. Um, maybe a little rough at first, but <laughs> the creativity is everything and, and execution is everything. If it's not executed properly, it can really backfire. Right, right. That makes sense. Um, and that's actually interesting what you talked about, the infrastructure. You probably had to change a little bit your like 
delivery, as you said, like delivery options, maybe like work with more couriers now, because now you're not just delivering a box of stuff to your head office or the office. Now you're delivering to personalized addresses. So that's actually interesting. Um, so that's something I guess you had to do as well. Oh, for sure. We've had countless conversations with our couriers in Canada Post, and, and you can Google this stuff. Um, they've never seen stuff like this before. They've never seen the amount of packages going out. So think of just our industry alone, where instead of 500 pieces going to one location, now 500 pieces are yeah. going to 500 locations. Yeah. So, so, and that's just one industry. So imagine the thousands of other industries in the same position. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Okay, Daryl, my last question for you, since you're, you're a sales guy, you've always been, you're in business development. So besides just getting creative and getting to the front stuff with your clients, your job is also, I imagine, to find new clients. Yeah, uh, what have you found that works really well for you in 2020? Like, have oh. you actually been able to land new clients in this crazy times? Like, what's worked for you? So so this is a funny one where the, the biggest thing that I, I missed about about the pandemic shutting everything down is that working from home can be very challenging. And, and the one thing I miss is I would go to a ton of conferences. I love being on the road. Um, I'm definitely an in-person kind of sales guy. Um, and I definitely do not thrive stuck behind a desk. I do enjoy working with a Christmas tree all the time, but um, <laughs> I definitely, I'm, I'm way better on the road. Um, but Zoom has definitely been a plus. And, and I think at this point for me, at first, I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to build a new business? How am I going to engage in conversations behind a, a screen? So I didn't have any other choice but to use technology and really embrace it. So at first, I'm like, I never use Zoom. I never use Skype. Uh, and now I'm on Zoom calls all the time because I think people can feel energy. Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. This is the closest to an in-person that people are going to get. Um, but all, honestly, like same thing, like, really mastering the phone, mastering emails, um, and really being strong. But, but now it's more important than ever to be on top of everything. Um, there's a lot of people um, looking, like still trying to buy. And it's so important to, to just to really be accessible, um, but also do it. Like in times like this, we have to stay ahead of the clutter that people get and, and make, how do, you, how do you stand out? So I think too is like bringing bringing your A game every day and <laughs> and having fun. I think everyone that talks to me, they're like, you you always have so much fun. I'm like, well, I, I drink a lot of wine, so that maybe helps. Um, but but it's really just important to like build relationships. Even there's so many people that like, for example, you, know, you said too, you're not buying as much as you used to, um, but you're going to buy more. So how do you continue to build relationships with people um, that may not be buying right now? But once the, they, they have a mind shift or have something come up, they're going to go to the person that they, they trust and like. And, and that's really the key is like for, for any salesperson, like um, be a relationship builder because people buy from people they like. Right. They, so it's, it's super easy. And, and it's funny. There's people like Dale Carnegie um, and Zig Ziglar who have written all the, all the books about sales. How to be liked and how to win people. <laughs> right. And, I love Dale Carnegie. Right, me too. I graduated the program in 2007. And it's it's funny where, and, and that was written 100 years ago or whatever, 80 years ago, and nothing has changed. Right. So the, the, the power of human connection, whatever that looks like, um, we really have to embrace uh, and, and that move forward with it. Right. Yeah, I think the common theme with both today's conversation is essentially 2020 had um, push people to be more creative, whether it comes to swag, whether it comes to different packages, where it comes to the sales uh, techniques of trying to get people's attention. I feel like companies and people got more creative and sometimes it takes a pandemic for people to start thinking of, uh, of new ways because that's human nature to you know, adapt and um, pivot to different directions. Was really fun, Daryl. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you for uh, doing this with me today. Uh, again, like I love how it was so conversational, and I myself, as a marketer, was actually looking forward to this conversation because I actually wanted to learn what was happening with the market. <laughs>
well, what's happening with the merchandising industry. So thank you so much. I For like viewers, that. I hope that you guys enjoy, uh, enjoy today, today's conversation, today's vlog. Um, as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn more about uh, these type of things. We thank you so much and we'll see you in our next episode. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Yay. <laughs>